better and definitely bolder. We're back with season two. We've been saying it. Season two is coming up. Season two is coming up. And finally, we're here. And I'm so excited because we have so much planned for you. But just before we do, I want to take you back, back into time to see how Be Bold was all started and how season one went. That goes to you as well. Big thanks to Scratch Studio who put that wonderful audio, special, customized song for Be Bold um, on the recap that you just heard. And as I promised, well, we do have a lot in store for you. And one of the things that we have planned is the website. We now finally have a Be Bold Show website. It's www.thebeboldshow.com. You can go to it right now, find out more about last season, what happened in the episodes, highlights of who was on, what they did. We have a blog on there. And very, very exciting thing, we do have a bold radio as well. So if you want to listen to good music and hear from people all around the world, this is also some way that you can take part. You can send us voice notes or send us, you know, your voice or any sort of message that you have about how you're being bold all around the world to our email or on our website, find our contact us. But let's just listen to what some people have been saying so that you can also have an idea of what you can do to really take part in Be Bold and Bold Radio. Hey, this is Kwame Chessy from Scotland. You're tuned in to Bold Radio. Hello, this is Maggie from England. For a little inspiration and some motivation, I stay tuned to Bold Radio, the only station that speaks to your heart. Hi, my name is Mina Evans. I'm from, from Ghana, and I own a clothing line called Mina Evans. It's time to be bold, so keep listening to Bold Radio. I am Vanessa from Canada, and I am tired of second-guessing my potential. I am ready to be bold. From South Africa, from all over, you know, it's very interesting. But we want to shout out and say big thanks to Ad Media, who took part in this, who are partners in Bold Radio, and they've done such a fantastic um, job putting this together. Um, and as you can see, well, around us, all around us, for us, purple is the new red on Be Bold. We have, you know, new colors, the pinks, the purples. We've got beautiful furniture. I mean, you must agree with me if you're looking right now. Just take a look around you. And, well, the woman that put it all together, um, Constance Swanica, CEO of Accents and Arts, is right here. Managed to grab her on here. But before I get to that interview, I want to just show you a little bit of a profile about who Constance Swanica is and also Accents and Arts. So let's take a look at that. Constance is the founder and CEO of Accents and Arts, a young, dynamic, and vibrant company that is aimed at rediscovering the striking and artistic nature of African iron, making her company the only one in Ghana to solely focus on working with metals. This inspirational woman has been working on her dream for over 11 years and has created a staff of 48 people that help her in realizing her reality. Most of the work that she's doing is not seen in Ghana. No. Yeah, so as an artist, I don't follow the trend. Like how other artists paint on canvas, the same thing. I'm also trying to, as I she's using metal. Maybe I might not use metal, but I try to use color and something else. Mm. Although she has received numerous awards over the years for her work and enterprising spirit at such a young age, Constance remains humbled by all the attention she's getting. Attention, which is not without reason, for she is one of the only female metal sculptors in Ghana. 
Up until recently, she had never exhibited her work because she felt most of them were mostly functional in nature rather than artistic. However, her change of heart led to her first ever exhibition titled The Passage of Discovery, which opened in Accra just a few weeks ago. Africa Lipso. Be Bold was lucky enough to follow her in the end phases of her journey. simply remarkable accents and arts and Miss Swanika herself is right here. She's one of the most successful um, females in this industry actually and wow I'm so happy that you're here to join us. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, can you tell me exactly how did you come up with this creative and this beautiful furniture that you're sitting on right now? <laughs> well when you approached me and you said you wanted a new look for the Be Bold show I thought um, it should be something very contemporary, very young, very fresh. So that's how we came out with this. Very simple but very elegant pieces. Well, you also added your own input into it. So we kind of like worked together yeah. to give you what the look you wanted. Yeah. Yeah. And have you, how long have you, has Accents and Arts been going on? Um, we're 11 years old, actually, this past May. Wow. Yeah. And is this, did you always start with Accents and Arts or did you have something else that you were doing Well, before? I set up this company almost immediately after university. Oh. But um, whilst in university, I used to work in a carpentry workshop. So um, for a period of five years, every holiday I would always go back. So um, it's not as if, let's say I started off the company and I really didn't have any experience. Mm -hmm. I had five years of practical experience, so that gave me the confidence to set up my own. We started off very small. Um, currently, I think we have about 45 artisans wow. that work with us, yeah. yeah. Well, I came to your showroom and I did meet some of these artisans. Um, yeah. And how do you feel about the way that you're impacting their lives? Most of them are from the community, as I understand. Mm -hmm. How does it make you feel that you're, you're giving them these opportunities and their talents? you know, seeing their talents and everything. Well, what, what do you think about that? Um, I'm, for me, it's just my way of giving back. Um, remember, at the same time, we work together, so I can't say that accents and art is just solely me. If they also didn't have an input into the business, um, basically, they just come in with very basic skills, you know, basic carpenters, welders, and what I do is I push them to their limit that um, once you have that in you, you can create basically anything, you know, whatever design I put, put on paper, don't tell me you can't do it. So far as you can bend the metal, we can, you know, make you do whatever we want. Yeah. So I think sometimes they think I'm so bad, but at the end of the day, when the piece comes out, they're excited. Yeah. And um, I think for me, um, the fact that you can push somebody to their fullest, is, is it's wonderful to see them smile at the end of, yeah. you know, when the piece comes out and they're happy. Yeah. That makes me happy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now, as a woman in this industry, what sort of <coughs> challenges do you face? Well, when you say what sort of challenges... Is, is it even a problem, being a woman in this industry? Is it like, okay, you're a woman, people think, no, she can't do the right, the furniture that I want, or, you know, do they, do people ever have that sort of approach no, to it? No, not at all. Um, I don't think that should ever be a setback. Um, mm -hmm. If you're a woman and you find yourself in a male-dominated industry, yeah. big deal, that's what you studied. You know, so um, that should never be a setback. Um, in the beginning, yes, they see you as, you know, <laughs> quite delicate. Are you sure that she's capable of doing the pieces? But I think over the years that um, we've proven ourselves time and time over and over again. So it's not much of a problem anymore. Mm -hmm. 